curse now the theme is if you listen to the first part then when it goes to the second part if you go back and do the first part then that's basically how you can reverse the curse but I want you to look at some of the things and I want you I want just to try to comment when I preach on some of the things that are the curses but it's your is our fault Reading from Living Bible, Deuteronomy. If you fully obey all these commandments of the Lord your God, the laws I am declaring to you today, this is Moses speaking, God will transform you into the greatest nation in the world. Look about somebody, it's not just for the Jews, it's for us. These are the blessings that will come upon you. Blessing in the city, blessing in the field or the country. Many children, they will not be a curse, they'll be a blessing. Ample crops, large flocks and herds, blessing of fruit and bread, blessings when you come in, blessings when you go out, 
The Lord will defeat your enemies before you. They will march out together against you, but scatter before you in seven directions. Confusion. The Lord will bless you with good crops and healthy cattle and prosper you and prosper everything, everything, underline, and prosper everything you do when you arrive in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Now you've got to get in the land. He will change you into a, uh-oh, he will change you into a holy people. I don't want to be holy. Dedicated to himself. This he has promised to do if you will obey, nasty word, obey, and walk in his ways. All the nations in the world shall see that you belong to the Lord, and they will stand in awe. That means respect. They will salute you. They say, we know I'm not going to bother them. The Lord will give you an abundance. So I want to say bush or basket. Bush. Of good things in the land. Just as he promised many children, many cattle, and abundant crops. He will open to you his wonderful treasury of rain in the heavens. Look at somebody say, if it's a drought in the land. He will open to you his wonderful treasure of rain in the heavens to give you fine crops every season. He will bless everything you do. You shall lend to many nations, but shall not borrow from them. You won't have to. If you only, if you, verse 13, that's not unlucky. Someone say verse 13. If you will only listen and obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. He will make you the head and not the tail. Not the butt end. And you shall always have the upper hand if you will only listen. Someone's had trouble listening. You don't know to obey because you won't even listen. Go right over your head. Go right by. You ain't heard nothing. But each of these blessings depends on your not turning aside in any way from the laws I have given you and you must never worship other gods I don't care if they do call him Allah and it means God Baal means God too but you ain't worshiping Baal don't we worship Allah worship Jehovah y'all ain't hearing me If you won't listen to the Lord your God and won't obey these laws I am giving you today, then all of these curses shall come upon you. Now, he didn't give the good thing first. Curses in the city. Curses in the field. Curses on your fruit and bread. The curse of barren wounds. Curse upon your crop. Curses upon the fertility of your cattle and flock. Curses when you come in. Curses when you go out. For the Lord himself will send his personal curse. No. I don't believe God. You better believe what he says. Now, if you don't believe God saying this, you need to get out of here. He ain't going, I don't believe God. He didn't tell you to believe. But you believe. He know you didn't know. That's why he had it written. For the Lord himself will send his personal curse upon you. You will be confused and if you in everything you do until at last you are destroyed because of the sin. Okay. Of forsaking him. He will send disease among you until you are destroyed from the face of the land you are about to enter and possess. He will send tuberculosis. Anything? Now I know the devil, yeah, uh huh, yeah, I know. Well, that's the devil. That's right. He's going to let the devil bring it. The devil is standing there wanting to give it to you. He, he sent his curse. All he do is just point the devil and say, You've been wanting to do this here. Now do it. Yes, it's the devil. But he has permission from God. He can't do it unless God allows him. Yes, I think that's the devil. That's right. You got that right. But the Lord said, I'm the one that's going to tell the devil. 
you can move on my territory, on my people. Uh -oh. That's what it says. He said, I'm going to send it. He, she will send tuberculosis. I believe sickness comes from the devil. That's right. But he's going to step back and say, go on in. Fever, infections, plague, and war. He will blight your crops, cover them with mildew. All these devastations shall pursue you until you perish. The heavens above you will be as unyielding as bronze, and the earth beneath you will be as iron. Someone said that's what drought causes. The land will become as dry as dust for the lack of rain, and dust storms shall destroy you. See, that's what's happening. Say, look at the news. We see it happening. The Lord will cause you to be defeated by your enemies. You will march out to battle gloriously, but flee before your enemies in utter confusion, and you'll be tossed to and fro among all the nations of the earth. Okay, I'm going to stop there. But we're going to be talking as the choir sings from verse 13, I believe. Amen. God bless the reading of his word. I'm just going to try just to talk briefly about reversing the curses. And the Lord, verse 13, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord. So we're going to find out what to reverse and how to reverse it. Someone say, I need to shift gears. I need to shift gears. Devil steamroller. Yeah. God has a way of reversing the devil's actions. Yeah. Whether it be legal, whether it be court, God has a way. I, yeah. God has a way. Somebody needs this. God has a way of reversing the divorce. Now, in the, there's a, a, a country, there's a place. This is really personal with somebody. There's, there's a place, there's a land. I was reading. Uh, God just told me to pick up this here book. And in this book of illustration last night, I spent at least 40 hours every, all during the week just trying to get a sermon together. Sometimes I get two or three, and then, then, then I have a problem. Now, now, which one you want me to go with this? This morning, Lord, sometimes Lord say neither one. <laughs> but they talk about a land uh, in Australia, and I think they call them Tiwis. And this is going to help somebody. This is going to help somebody. Because I just say this, I'm going to reverse a divorce. This will help you explain it. In this here country, in Australia, there's certain tribe. I don't know who they are. I don't know what color they are. But anyway, they said that they believe that the uh, woman should always have a husband. They believe that a woman should never be without a husband. And so when the husband dies, one of the things they do, when the husband dies, they, while they are burying him, the widow gets remarried right on the spot when they marry him. So God, God can reverse a divorce. A man has figured out. So somebody need to claim, I mean, I ain't talking about go back to the same old Negro. Don't, don't, don't. If you need some advice. Ladies, you need to learn this here. I'm going to address it here. Please don't let no, no good anybody. I'm trying to be nice because I'm on the air. Please don't let anybody that don't know God that don't know the Bible, that don't even know you, all they know is what you have. I ain't going no farther. Which everybody else got, you know, there's a woman, you know, uh, do I, I'm trying to be nice. Don't like this church, don't like no other church, especially this one. Don't like your pastor, just don't like the way he look. Hey. Don't let, please don't let them interpret to you what the Bible means. They've been no good and abused you. Don't let them pull no Bible and the Bible said no. Be free. And I don't mean just be free in court, be free in your mind. Uh -huh. Don't be looking at me funny talking about, now I ain't endorsing nothing. But when you got a divorce, you, I, don't go and beg nobody to get, you know, and, Tell the Lord I need to be married. Then this time. Lead me. 
guide me along the way. You don't lead me, I will stray. Uh, reverse what? I want you to know that when we talk about things under a curse, I want you to realize that some things only happen, Brother Art Jones told you that, Dr. Art Jones, only happen to you if you receive it. The only way that many times you receive it is because you heard somebody say. So I want you to know that when we talk about under curse, too many of you give too much, uh, uh, you, you act like what the devil says and what society says. Uh, and then we get them preach. You make you take a lot of stuff and say, well, we just under generational curse. Just because you under curse, you do not need to believe it. You do not need to believe, young man, that you are an endangered species because you come from a what family that didn't have two parents. Y'all not hearing me. Though our people as a whole may have more single parents than the other people, still the other part of America still has about half of them. So if they, so we should not act as if we are the only ones that may not be able to function. We do not come from a dysfunctional family just because, don't believe that curse. Just because, it don't have to be a curse. You can reverse it if you don't accept it because it's not necessarily true that we are disenfranchised, that we are, you know, that we come from a dysfunctional anytime. A one lonely woman does more with less, the longest than any other people. How can you say, because she's by herself, she's dysfunctional. She is operating, y'all in him, a little lonely woman. Don't have much money. Many of us were raised by mothers who were, did good to get $3.50 or $5 a day. Y'all ain't hearing me. Many of them were raised on just neck bones and pinto beans on Sunday. But God, we are not dysfunctional. You don't believe everything you hear and accept it as a curse. You don't decide that, well, because we are the most unemployed, that does not mean that you don't have no right to get a job. God runs things. God can give you intelligence to make a job. I'm talking about reversing the curse. Something just means just open up our mind. Look around you. God is saying the door is open. I read in the statistics. Statistics can lie. Figures can lie. Sometimes they stack up, but they ain't had no kind of, at all, they ain't, hey, well, they took this here national poll. They ain't been to your neighborhood. They haven't been to your house. There are generations of people who started, didn't have, grandma didn't have no education. Grandpa couldn't do, they couldn't read his name, but he could count money. Grandpa knew how to work every day. Grandpa, they didn't know how to fix no budget, but grandpa brought his money home, put it in his wife's hand, and that wife was the cook. That wife ironed the clothes, no cleaning bill. Ladies of the 90s, no cleaning bill. They invented wash and wear clothes, and we still had this big cleaning bill that we can't afford. But dysfunctional, they call it. Anytime you could function and have clean clothes and didn't have money to get a cleaning bill, any time that you ate good food and had a full stomach, y'all ain't hearing me, and didn't have to go out and eat no high cholesterol, right. it's to our disadvantage, not our advantage, eating out fast food. That's not an advantage if all you eat in this hamburger, salt, nitrates. Oh, let me get, let me, let me get, let me get down here. A curse that needs to be reversed 
in order for us to be the head and not the tail. Let me just go by this here paper. First of all, I guess I'm going to go down here, maybe. We need to reverse the curse of babies having babies. Now, I'm going to get real down to the nitty-gritty with this. If you don't have no self-control, at least use some birth control. That's reversing the curse. You are under a curse having a baby at 13, 14, 15, 16. Why you, need, you, know, you are under a curse to have a baby. That's a curse don't have to be. If you don't have no self-control, well, I don't know. The Bible ain't a good birth control. Yes, it is. Every time he won't in, put a big old Bible on your leg, on your knee. See, if you can penetrate this, you can get it. <laughs> get, your, get your big Bible. You don't have to be this big. See, if you put it down and say, if you can go through this, you can have it. Y'all ain't hear me. Yeah, the Bible can be your birth control. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm making good sense. I'm, I, I don't understand. If I don't get no place out, why is it with all even teenagers can go and get birth control without parent rental consent? Now, there's no sense. Forget about just use common sense. There's no sense in these fellas. Now, please tell your young boys that when they go off to college, they better be ready because the word is out. Most women go to college not to get an education but to get a husband. Oh, y'all didn't know that. So you need, when he get ready to go to college, you don't need to tell the girl to keep their skirt down. But it's already up. You need to tell the young fella to look here. If you can't keep it in your pants, you better put a sock on it. Wisdom, wisdom will say, if you ain't going to keep it in your pants, then you need not to trust them to say they are taking care of it. They're taking care of it all right. You should not believe that they, I just thought that they was using something. They sure are using what you got. Using what they gave you. They using something, but I thought you ain't got no business thinking. You're already out of control. You're already out of the will of the Lord. At least, come on. The Bible said the wisest man, some of y'all looking at me funny. If you're going to do wrong, Saba said, if you're going to do wrong, don't be over wicked. I mean, if you're going to be do foolish things, don't be a complete fool. Don't graduate from food to idiot. Now, intelligent people can do foolish things, but idiot means you don't have enough sense to figure nothing out. Idiot means, you know, normal intellect can do foolish things. We all have done foolish things. But the idiot can't do, he can't even get up to food. He's got 30 or 35. His, his, his intelligence quota is 30 or 35. Mental retarded. Means, you know, maybe they might have an intelligence level of 69 or 70, below 70, right? But the idiot is around 30 or 35. You can't even teach them to, to, to look at their name in great big letters and know that's their name because they're the idiot. So if you're going to be foolish, please don't be an idiot. Use some sense. That's what Solomon meant. Y'all may look at me funny. If you're going to be, I mean, if you're going to be out of order, at least have some limits. If you're going to stick, at least you ought not be on order to stick everything you see. You ought to have sense to know that free don't mean free. You ought to remember that if they passing her from, from long, if they pass her around like a football, the fullback got her, then the, then the end, end got her, and y'all and him. And your buddy done told you about it, and then you're going to jump in there after he done told you. And a slut is a slut. It's different between a fallen woman or someone lost her virginity than a, and a slut. It's a different between, I mean, if you're going to be wrong, you ought not be a bitch. Uh, what is a bitch? That's a female dog. When a female dog get in, in heat, they don't care how many medals they won at the dog show. Don't care how many medals they won and how pretty they trotted out. 
and stood there and received this first when 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 the heat come. If they tie them up, they could be barking and scratching and howling and don't want to eat, want to get out. And if you have the door happen to come up, they're gone. And won't be back until they look till they got a load. Y'all don't hear me. If you're gonna do wrong. Don't be the lowest thing on a totem pole. Uh, and if you have a baby, it's a curse, I don't care what they say, to murder. I don't care what they told me. It was just a fetus. The Bible talks about in I I know you haven't heard nobody say nothing about it. They busy telling you about how to get some money mm -hmm, on Sunday morning and Sunday night. But there is a verse in the law in the Old Testament where if you were wrestling or messing around and a man happened to fall on a pregnant woman or happened to hurt her some kind of way accidentally and she lost that baby. I didn't say in you no know, trimester. If she was pregnant and she had a miscarriage because you bumped into her, knocked her down, or hurt her in some kind of way, then you owed her some restitution for losing the baby. Uh, farther on, uh, uh, the Bible said to one of the prophets that I called you while you were in your mama's womb. So don't act like that God don't have nothing to do with it. I know you claim that the men is your body. Because mm. the husband, the man ain't got nothing to do with it. We don't have no rights. Ain't nothing we put in there, just yourselves. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the way it is, huh? You were the virgin and conceived, so it's your body. But God says the body that's in your body, God. And you don't know what you are turning down. The, 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 the murder that you do, the child that you take out may have in for, when it left heaven, it may have, I have the cure for cancer. I had the cure for your cancer that you're going to have when you're 55, but you killed me, so you're going to die because you didn't let me get here. There are too many people that need children, that want children, that can't have children. Amen. Anywhere you go, that is not. The world had decided that don't use Berkeley. Why is it that they don't use no preventive, but when they have one, the first thing they say is have an abortion. If you're going to do something about having no baby, have one before it gets conceived. Do something about it being conceived, not wait until then act like it's all right. Some of y'all haven't, some of some of y'all having trouble thinking. Well, I don't want to be embarrassed. I'm telling you what, when you do not do what God, how is an abortion a curse? It's a curse because by and by, scientific surveys shows that when they get married and after a while they hear that baby crying. In spite of the fact that they claim don't have no gift complex, they come back to the psychiatrist and say, I am in here because I feel bad because I don't feel guilty. I'm having a complex. I don't understand why I don't feel guilty. Oh, they do feel guilty as reading the end there. You will not do wrong and get by. Y'all don't want to hear that. Uh, let, let me talk to the ladies again. Reversing the curse. Having a baby and you're stranded. It's a curse for babies to have babies. Your body does not have the prophet, you can throw your whole health factor back because you have a baby. Just because it's big enough to put something in didn't mean that your 14, 13, 15, 16, even 70, 18 year old body has fully matured. You are still growing and maturing on the inside. You may be as tall as you're going to be. You may have as big a titties as you're going to have, but your body still got some things that Mother Nature is working on to mature you. 
everything has not reached its full function. Just because you're 18. They used to tell you that at 21, but because they needed some enough people to go to the Vietnam War, they brought it down. How is it? A, you used to just had to wait to 21 because then you were more nearer being matured. Boys still keep on growing at 21, 22, 23, so not 24, and 25. Y'all ain't hearing me. Why is it all of a sudden in order to have enough people going to the war, they reduce it to 18. Now, you know, all just because you ain't grown because they say you grown. Some of us say we grown, feel like we grown at 13. All of a sudden at 13, you feel like your mama don't have no sense. You act like your daddy don't have no sense. Nobody over 25 has any sense. Only the 15 year olds in my group, I ask them everything. What to do, how to dress, this or the how is this cool? Nobody, the teacher don't have no sense. Don't nobody, if you don't get the answer you want, go ahead and try it, then they don't have no sense. So then how are you grown? If, as you think, you know what happens? Proof of what you're talking about. 18-year-olds do not have no sense. 18 to 24 people as a whole do not have any sense. I know I'm insulting you. Who is it that does the college things? The vacation time, what they call it? Spring breaks all over the world. They are, some of them are so rich that they go to, I looked at yesterday at a whole, uh, it was on a cover of Con Can, Can, Con Can, come on, Babylon, what to say? Can, Cancun, Babylon. I know it's on at least two hours. I kept looking at it. They did. Now, those are the rich people. Now, these at spring break, people, now, what ages are they? 18, what's college level? 18 through 24. Now, they're grown. Do you think it makes sense to put a hose in your mouth? To stay up three, just get three or four hours of sleep? You think it makes good sense to spend the money to go there to see how few clothes you can wear, how much beer and wine you can drink. Y'all ain't hearing me. You think it makes good sense to go to college to learn how to drink? How stupid can you be? You mean all this here time, how you been drinking your water? How you been getting water to your mouth if you got to go to college to learn how to drink? I mean, if you didn't know how to take a glass, bend your elbow, and put it in your mouth, at least you ought to be able to put your mouth on the faucet or go get the water. Or why you have to spend money to go to college to learn how to drink? Well, I have to go to college so I can get away from home so I can learn how to have sex so when I get married, I will be a good sex partner. More and more, the curse is. Sex before marriage. Practicing positions that we never thought about. Y'all ain't hearing me. You got 69 of them. We only have one. Y'all ain't missionary. We, amen. Y'all got 69, 39. You're 89. All kind of, yeah, upside, side. Yeah, yeah. And yet and still, the divorce rate gets higher and higher more people are displeased and are not compatible after all of that. I ain't going to say screwing. After all that doing, I ain't going to say screwing. After all that doing. See, the lie that you told, it's a curse. Practicing something because every individual is a different individual. Then you get messed up. It's a curse to do sex before marriage because what you did when you get another mate, you forget that everybody's not a cookie cutter. So if she don't, if he don't turn you upside down and tell you to back it up and beat your ah, y'all are just crazy. If he don't cuss you and call you all kind of names, that he can't please you. If he don't talk dirty and low down. Oh, it's your first experience. Is you, see, you tend to feel, well, a lot of people are in trouble 
because they felt like your first second experience. See the thing of it now. Man, oh, let me. I'm just going by my cue card. If I don't get no place, yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm gonna stay there. Leave me alone. When you leave it alone, we'll go somewhere else. What's messing up the church? Preachers having sex with the secretary. Preachers running around on their wives. Deacons running around on their teenage. What? Don't talk about I don't need to preach about sex. Shut up. Leave me alone. My mouth is bought and paid for. I'm going to tell it like a TIS is or don't tell it at all. Don't bother me. This is what brought your mama up. If your mamas hadn't listened to me, they wouldn't have been here to marry that good husband. Y'all ain't hear me. Somebody listen to me. Somebody, somebody. I taught your mothers and fathers to be virgins. No, oh, y'all ain't hear me. I taught them to be selective. I have a crew that started out that when I said, don't marry nobody, don't like this church, don't like me, and the ones that they, when they, I'm a, I don't care what bitch you're going to say. I'm going to marry one anyhow. They didn't last one year. They had this testimony. If you don't listen to me, I don't even know what you're listening to. How can somebody else, I want you to meet him. Don't you know people that hate you so bad that they would introduce you to a dog if they thought you... And, <laughs> let, let, let me tell you how some messed up it is. Yeah, okay, let, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Then I'm going to come back to that. It's a curse for you to feel like, to have a mentality to feel like, I'm talking to the young ladies. See, 80% of every church is young ladies, so y'all don't mind if I preach to y'all. Uh, since it's a man, well, do y'all mind a man coming out and helping y'all out? I mean, shouldn't I go by the majority? Shouldn't I help the most precious things that God made? Y'all going to be the prettiest things that God made. Come on here now. Y'all crazy. I look at y'all funny when Carlos man got a ponytail and y'all calling the right color talking about he pretty. I don't, see, I was raised ain't nothing cute. I mean, men can't wasn't nothing cute but a monkey and a baby. We were raised in society. You didn't tell your boy that he was cute. You didn't make him think you thought he was cute. Because that's for monkeys and for babies. Well, he ain't no baby because he got a big foot. That's all right. He's still a baby. Babies still want titty. That's why they, all the interest is whether or not you got big boobs. Or whether you, all they want to see are not your boobs. Because they're still a baby. Y'all looked at me funny. Y'all don't know that what society is about? And like they, you under curse if you feel like. Now I got this, I got a sheet that came out of Ebony magazine. It tells you about 10 mistakes that women make. Can I, can I, can I talk this here? Can I talk this here? Is it all right? Uh, if you don't need it, you can junk it. And if you don't think I'm valid, you can go back and I'll pass you out some copies. I, every once in a while, I dig them up and pass them out to somebody. Uh, somebody, I commanded somebody. And I don't care about him being a member here. I said, told somebody, I said, I don't care. I won't see him any Wednesday night. He didn't come. I said, you need to tell that pretty girl that's coming in here with that no good Negro. Won't work. Don't work. I didn't say can't work. I didn't say can't find a job. You don't need to hook up with a curse. You don't need to, let me put it down. You don't need to feel like you got to give your keys, your money, your apartment, your legs to somebody because they don't have no place to stay. If they can't stay with their mama, you know they... If mama then finally said, get out of here with your cute, no good self, 
if the mama didn't been birthed him, you know mama's love ain't nothing like mama. If ma if if he done fell out with his mama, if he, that means he won't even give his mama a penny, and then what you think he gonna give you? A long banana? You're worth more than that. Now, 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 I know you heard it before, but I keep on reminding you that God said in the first book of the Bible. Now, this is something that Koran does not have, the Bhagita in Buddha, no other book, not even psychology book and biology books explain. I know you may go and study anatomy and learn all about the bones and all this, see, 206 or 8 bones in the body, uh, 600 and plus muscles. And see, I do know something. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, you check it out. You don't know I'm wrong. Let me mean. I think I got it right. 206, some people have 208 bones. Some people have some extra bones. You either have 206, unless you're missing something, got a toe cut off, or, <laughs> or 208 bones. Even a book on anatomy does not tell you this, that when God, the book, this book, don't let nobody tell you because you got a little edge of muscation, edge of must upscation that you don't need this book. Because this book tells you in the first, it, it explains that when God made man, he used the word asha. That meant he just took some mud and pounded it and beat on it and pushed it together and finally made a man. He had a time because he was making a tough old man with big tight buns and big chest. He used the word he made man. He used the word that he used when you talk about putting a pot on it. He took clay and pounded it and made it and squeezed it to make man. But when he made woman, uh, you have a right to stick out your chest because he took he didn't pound on women as we you ain't got no when he made woman she already had a head start on man because material that he made woman out of didn't need to be pounded didn't need to be beat on God showed us that the woman did not need to be beat on or treated roughly or treated harshly. He didn't give a kid about making man. He took some clay and, you know, it wasn't soup. He had, you know, had to be clay. He took it in mold. He didn't just take some mud pies and slush some water and make a mold. He took clay, something that was half stiff and half hard and molded, squeezed it together. The way he squeezed, I mean, he had, he had, hang and shake. But woman... He, he used the word pana. He used another word which meant he skillfully. Adam looked at her and said woman. Woman meant a man with a womb. But he had sense enough to understand that when God made woman, though she had legs, two legs, two arms, a mouth, but he had sense enough to know that when God Use the word panah. He said, I'm a, I have made you a woman. When God said panah, and he looked at her, he said, I know you're talking good. Because, y'all know, y'all think you know where I'm going. But not only, first of all, I'm going to tell you something I ain't told before. See, God remind me. God took the whole body of woman, and under woman's skin, I don't care how pretty some of these men and how feminine some of them try to act like, you cannot be as pretty as a woman because God. Under a woman's skin, only God can do that. I don't care how fat a man is. Under a woman's skin, I don't care how skinny she is. Under a woman's skin, God put a padding of fat all over her body. Under all of her skin, only God can do that. That's why they're still so soft. Because God put a padding of fat under, I ain't talking about cellite, I'm talking about, I mean, it's, I don't care how skinny they are. See, some of y'all have, you know, have problems, see. But under every woman's skin, 
there's a thin layer, there's a, you know, how many know that when, if you, how many know when you want carpet on your house, you want a padding under that? Because then that makes it feel like real salt. I mean, that's what the padding, the padding is not necessary, but it makes good, it feels good for you just to walk on it. So that's why, I, I, I'm telling y'all know this, don't play, I don't care if a woman is 90 years old and she may be wrinkled, but when you touch their hand, you're going to feel softness. Y'all, you know, because there's a layer of fat. God took the same epidermis and because he was doing a panal thing, he put a layer, a cushion, so that they would be softer to the touch than any man. Now, uh, nah, well, I know you know that he looked at her chest and said, it ain't pretty enough. He took his finger and made it stick out on both sides. And then he put a milk a dairy in there. Uh-huh. He put a milk maker machine in there. And still she wasn't a cow. Still she wasn't a heifer. Because when he made cows, you know, they got ugly things. Y'all notice that there? But he only made two. Made them pretty. Now you crazy. Now come on here. We ain't being vulgar. Took his finger. Same chest. What he made? Put milk in there. And put extra receptors that can receive that they're called. Uh, some of y'all don't realize this. I know I'm talking plain, but see, you try, I'm trying to get you to understand what you're looking at and don't realize what you have. That he put nerve endings in a woman's that not in a man. You know, I know some people trying to come with, you know, I know some of y'all think y'all know some. And, and he put a sensitivity in them nipples that he didn't put in ours, y'all didn't hear me. So y'all could enjoy sex better since y'all got to do the most pain in the reproduction in once a month. See, see God is fair. You know, I mean, it, it, am, I, am I talking good? Then he took his finger and went down there and said zip and made a split and then stuck it in there and made a hole and then, and then took the kidneys and the liver and the pancreas. She had the same thing that Adam had, but a smaller body. It took a God to take a smaller body with a smaller waist. Set them hips out. Said she need broader hips than a man had. Go on here. And then in the midst of the liver and pancreas, all that, moved all that over and didn't have nothing dysfunctional so he could make room for a womb and over. That took a God. That's why you are specially and skillfully made and you ought not disrespect yourself. If they don't respect you, you respect yourself. Don't bring a curse on yourself. When you, if I don't get nowhere but this, if, if you, I got six, seven more things, but I guess I won't get to them. But let me tell you this here, that the biggest thing that has hindered us as when you bring these babies. Uh, that used to be a continuing ed school right across the street from us. And I would notice, because there were one or two girls in our church that were going there. I noticed this. I know they act like, yeah, I got a baby. But when you see them not in front of you being braggadocious, the boy going around with his chest stuck out top, I got strong brain there, I got a, I got a baby. Way across town that I don't support. I got a baby. Way across town that I'm going to say ain't mine. Ain't mine. Now, I don't care how much they try to brag to you. Yeah, I'm a woman now. I got a baby. When, you, when they buy themselves and coming out of there, I look out the window. They be looking so sad. They be looking so depressed. That is starting a generational cycle. Ain't no way in the world, I don't care how crazy you are, that you can feel good when you know that he don't, first of all, he don't have a job. If he is trying to get an education, he going to claim that he cannot support the baby because he got to go to school. Most of them ain't going to school. 
but they ain't going to get no job. Now, I do need to progress to this. Oh, let me just say that. When you bring a baby in depression, when you have been disregarded, uh, refused, abused, suspected, been rejected, you cannot help. I don't care how crazy you are. Reject, if you've been rejected, and then don't. Come on here now. Let, let's do history. Let's do history. Now, they thought they had it going on when they said do the DNA. Because sometimes blood tests were the suspect. But you know there are people that are so hellish it's, you know, that they will, you only hear me, will bring blood of someone else so that the DNA test will, when it comes back, it ain't someone. Well, the D, I know what I'm talking about. You see, some of the health people had not realized that they had to put a stop to on the drug test. They couldn't just ask people to bring in their urine because they would go and have a bottle of someone else's urine in there. So now they make you go in there and someone stands there and watch you do the pee test so you won't do that. They need to learn that they need to, they need to, uh, a, a, a certified person need to take the blood test. Y'all ain't hearing me. DNA don't lie, but if you get the wrong DNA, then, then it's lie about who the baby is. Y'all ain't hearing me. That start, anytime you're depressed, upset, be rejected, the baby gonna come in with a spirit of rejection. The baby, I don't care how pretty it is. Something gonna grab the baby. You have children that at three, four, and by the time they start the school, there's something talking to them telling them in their mind there's a broken record going on and on. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. When they find out, where my daddy? That start that wheel of turning. Why he not here? Start a wheel of turning. It start that record playing. You are disowned. You are not wanted. Come on here. Come on. Come on here. And then when they hear you fussing, you just like your no good daddy. When they see you hurt, and when they see you sacrificing, and you don't have to say but one word, and that gets in there, me and ain't no, if it's a girl, the record says, me and ain't no good. All men would deserve it. And though they be a fool and give it up at 13 like you did at 13, still. And then God cannot even send you a man of your dreams because you would reject him. He ain't cute enough. He ain't rough. I want a roughneck. Come on in here. In the natural world, the reason we try to preach to you and tell you to let the Spirit of God get hold of you because the Spirit of God will change. Not, you think that God, damn it, Jesus. You act like God, all, all God wants to do is get hold of your, between your legs. God wants to get hold of more than your arms and your legs. God wants to get hold of more than your penis and vagina. You act like that's all the Holy Ghost wants. God wants to get hold of your mind. Your mind controls the rest of your body. If God don't get hold of your mind, then you will not be able to focus on whatsoever things are lovely. That's in the book. It tells you, focus on whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are true. What things have a good report, but your mind you cannot go around, all you hear is junk. Some of you under curse because you just listen to junk.